hey guys what's up and welcome back to it's about everything and this is the part 2 episode of the series if you haven't seen part 1 then you can click on the card appeared on the top right corner to see it I highly recommend you seeing the part 1 first before we begin and if you have already seen it then let's get going so as you can see on your screen I'm opening up the second motor as well the screws were jammed a little bit and I had to follow the same procedure with the plier as the previous motor. A little bit of tapping with the screwdriver butt and a gentle push and the top cover opens up. So the interior of the motor is almost identical and if you could notice it has only two of those carbon brushes and the third one is missing. Probably it was repaired before and someone took the third brush and the contacts out. Maybe that's why it's super clean inside. Ok so now let's keep it aside and have a look at the armature. Now just by looking at it you can clearly see the difference between the previous armature and this one. It appears as it's brand new. Let's try and pull it out. The magnetic field is quite strong I had to say. I had to fight with the magnetic field and finally it came out. Now if you did notice the casing looks different from the inside. Anyway for now let's keep the casing aside and have a closer look at the armature. Alright if you compare both of these armatures side by side they are identical but the one on the left looks burned due to overheating maybe but it was still functional and working if you have seen the previous video. Apart from the coil you can see clear signs of overheating on the armature in the left. So while I was taking a closer look I found out an exposed wire in the bottom of the armature and later I discovered that not one but two exposed wire was there 180 degrees apart from each other and the same thing was present in the other armature as well so my assumption is that it's the design of the armature winding and this is where the winding was started or finished. Now having a closer look at this armature from every direction it appears brand new and was never used but of course with the brush marks on the commutator it's clear that it was used for quite some time. Now let's have a look at both the motors outer casing and you can observe a substantial difference on the interior of the motors. But first let me hold the motor in the correct order from left to right the first motor which I have opened before and this one. So with a side by side comparison we can see the difference such as the magnets are much thicker in the right one and was held with locks whereas the left one has its magnets glued on to the shell. The thickness of the magnets has nothing to do with the magnetic field. As you can see that the magnetic field on both the motors are quite strong and I'm still confused about the material used to glue these magnets into this motor. I'm not sure whether it's welded or some sort of glue but it appears as welding, brass welding to be exact. Ok so now I'm going to use the brush section from the previous motor and fit it to this motor to see how it works. Well aligning an armature in a strong magnetic field is quite tough. I had to fight with the magnetic field for quite some time and after that I was finally able to fit it. Ok so the complex part was not putting the armature in between the magnetic field but putting the commutator in between the brushes. The only way I could figure out how to push the brushes back and slide the commutator in was using a screwdriver. So while keeping downward pressure I had to push the brushes one by one and if you could remember it has three brushes. So after spending some time on it I finally was able to get it in. Ok so now everything is completely fitted and now I'm going to test it. So I've not uh, fitted the screws because for now it's not required. So I'm going to use the same battery that I've used earlier. Now I'm going to test it on both the speeds because it, this motor is a two speed motor so I'm going to use both the connections that was provided. So 
so this is probably the first speed and this is the higher speed so judging by the speed I can say that the first motor it has the coil is somehow shorted maybe that's why it was not having the full speed and the second motor the breast section of the second motor it's jammed maybe due to lubrication and that's why it was not providing adequate lubrication and the motor was not able to uh, speed at its full power so this is the brush section from the first motor and its brushes and the bushes all are well lubricated and in fine condition so what I need to do is I'm going to uh, wind the motor in the first armature I'm going to wind the first armature because it's shorted and I'm going to wash the second motor nicely and I'm going to chop the top section the wiper gear sections and I'm going to make it much more smoother so that's going to be a different video for that so for now I'm going to end this video right now so stay tuned for the next update on this motor as I'm going to wind this motor up and it's pretty simple to open these types of motors so you can see here the wires I've opened up one wire and it's pretty simple all you need to do is open up the copper clips it's made in such a way that you can easily open the wire and then rewind this motor so stay tuned for the video of winding this motor i hope you enjoyed this video and if so then hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel if you are new and share it with your friends so thanks a lot for watching and have a nice day i'll see you later